I guess I'm going to follow on from uh, a little bit of what um, Greg has said and obviously Andrew and tie in a couple of local issues there and I guess the take home messages from, from this one is that um, tied in with the droplet size and efficacy but also some of the trends in spraying and that uh, along with bigger droplet size in some circumstances we're also seeing bigger faster machines and so I'll talk about a couple of the, the effects there. Now people have been along to these sorts of talks or been along to my workshops over the years and I think we've been very, saying very similar things to what Greg's uh, saying and I'll just put a couple of examples of previous trial results where we play around with say glyphosate deposition at lower rates to try and pick up efficacy and that you know we've looked at ranges of droplet sizes and found no significant differences for fully translocated products as an effect of efficacy. So I'm not trying to highlight these graphs other than to say that we've probably got six or ten years of data saying exactly the same thing. Um, and I think that holds true very much in a low stubble environment where we don't see necessarily big impacts of uh, application volume on efficacy. But in some, some higher stubble environments, then water volume can become more important. It's more about selecting which one that you uh, are going to go with. And I'll, I'll just put this one up as an example of a recent trial from last summer, because Greg was mentioning velvet leaf, which um, I guess as a heliotrope, we, we did some trial work on this last summer. And I guess to point out a couple of very similar things to what he was talking about, this trial was uh, done in South Australia, so we're dealing with big targets. Um, they're not hiding in among stubble, they're actually pretty easy to hit. Uh, two application volumes, and there was two tag mixers used there, so we had a, a contact type product as a spray seed, and then we had a glyphosate mix which included 2,4-D and, and um, Gar and a few other products in there. And so, as you can see, at the 60 litres, we had a range of droplet sizes in there, and at the lower volume we did see a decrease in efficacy with really big droplets. Um, but once we took the water volume up to about 90, which is remarkably similar to the work they've done, we actually tend to even out those differences in efficacy. Whereas with our translocated tank mix, we're not seeing an increase in efficacy with volume. Exactly the same sort of points that Greg's making is that contact type products, the biggest driver is going to be your water volume in terms of how you get deposition and where you get deposition. With your fully translocated products, you have a little more flexibility in droplet size and that can actually be a really useful thing for matching it to conditions. Because these results, that trial was spray when the delta T was 14 and a half to 15 and a half, which um, most people would say is crazy. But again, if you're using larger droplets, you can also use that to help manage um, conditions as well as efficacy. So it does open up our spray window a little bit. There's a couple other things I wanted to introduce about um, deposition because I think the trend for a lot of guys as they move on to self-propelled and there's obviously a lot in our northern farming systems is because they can be driven faster, they are driven faster. And I think most people would know some of their clients are doing that. And that introduces some new issues about where we're getting deposits and the effects of the machine itself. And um, this is basically the same paddock, just two parts of it. One was sprayed with a self-propelled, the other one was a, with a trailing rig. Does anyone want to have a guess which size which? Can we have a vote? Who's going to vote for that one to be the self-propelled? You're wrong. Like there's only one person put it, but at least one brave person. That was actually done with a trailing rig, that was done with an SP under similar sort of conditions. That's actually into a headwind. And that's got a slight crosswind. When, when you go out as an aggro and look at this in the paddock, you're going to see that every second set of wheel tracks, that sort of effect, if it's a headwind tailwind effect. If it's a crosswind effect, you're going to see that every set of wheel tracks. And so it's actually helping your clients identify where there's issues. And some of that, particularly with your knockdown products, can actually be sorted out with some wheel track nozzles or some extra deposition there. And we've seen some other effects of deposition um, in relation to this. I guess the higher speeds that we're talking about, Andrew's higher travel speeds were about 18 to 20. Higher travel speeds for our self-propelled sprayers are 35. Uh, so th there's, there's a few things that once you move to coarse droplets, they tend to hold their trajectory a little bit better. And so you get speed and forward speed effects actually causing some problems. And particularly shadowing in around stubble and behind stubble becomes 
There's a lot of guys doing double knocks. Things like driving in the opposite direction next time can actually help pick up some of that. Um, so there's a lot of strategy you can deal with, but a lot of it's being aware of what's going on. Um, this one, it's a, a little bit of a complex thing, but we've just been taking, um, doing some, I guess, evaluations of different SPs under different conditions. If you can imagine you're driving into the page, so this is actually out on the left side of the machine, that's the right, and what we're doing is between the row or between the stubble lines and behind the stubble, then you get outside the left wheel, inside the left wheel centre of the machine, and this is around the wheels and out on the right boom. Essentially, this left example is driving at 26 kilometres an hour, 60 litres per hectare with a 25 centimetre spacing. The nozzle's only running at about two, two and a half bar, which actually puts them at the big end of course. The one on the right's actually travelling faster, same water volume, but getting it up to the smaller end of course. And the deposition in around the stubble evens out a lot more. There's a big difference between the big end of course and the small end of course in terms of droplet numbers. And so a lot of times, you know, we're, we're critical of speed and it does increase drift and it does increase other issues. But if we're reducing our speed without considering what's an appropriate pressure to run the nozzle out or, or how we're getting deposition or the effects in around the stubble, I think we're missing part of the picture. So guys running faster, um, particularly on some of these dual boom setups, such as the rapid fires and that where they kick in extra sets of nozzles as they go faster, if you don't get the volume right, you really drop the pressure when it kicks in multiple nozzles. And there's certainly a lot of these around, and running in that big end of course at lower pressure without considering what's going on in the machine can actually have some adverse effects on deposition around it and in behind the stubble. So I've probably got about four or five hundred of these sort of graphs, oops, going back, sorry. Four or five hundred of these graphs that I've been collecting on different SPs. And it's interesting that the, the bias and the air movements around them, there's some similarities but some differences in between them. And in fact, at high speeds, even with front, front mounted booms, we're seeing tyres push deposition out of the way of the wheel tracks. So that, that creates new issues for deposition. So in relation to that, that was the nozzle we were running there. And running down here at the lower end of pressure compared to the small end, of course, has a big, big impact on droplet numbers and deposition out in the paddock. And the same would be true of all the others. Don't want to complicate it. So I'd say to most guys, if, if you're selecting um, you know, an application volume, obviously it does have to take into account your travel speed, but also people should be looking at the pressure at the nozzle and what the nozzle is actually producing in terms of droplet size. Because you have a bit of, bit of a range there to play around with in terms of coarse or, or larger, but I think running some nozzles at low pressure to achieve coarse droplets doesn't always result in good efficacy. There's, there's other issues that we need to consider. So it's back to my first point, so we can actually take questions and bring the other people back in. Um, increased capacity, like larger, wider, faster sprayers, can improve results if people know, uh, I guess, the limitations of that and actually are running the nozzles quite well. And I think higher travel speeds do create additional problems. There's no doubt in my mind and the data that Andrew's presented increase your drift risk and I guess the time of day when you make that application is critical too because the risk at night is way higher than it is during the day in that airborne fraction and I think operating the nozzles at an appropriate pressure to get the best out of them in terms of retention and efficacy of the paddock is also an important factor. So that's my little bit to add on to uh, the comments that the other guys have said. I think um, understanding that mode of action of the product um, is a great starting point, as in you do have a bit of flexibility in droplet size with your fully translocated. So I'd always set up for the worst conditions I expect, not the best, and actually know what those limits are. So you know, your machine should be set up with the boom as, as low as practical for it to be stable and get over the country, knowing that increased boom height will increase drift. Um, be aware of the speed range, and that's, that's where understanding the nozzle's output is critical in that if you decide to go a bit slower because conditions are you know, less than ideal but within an acceptable range for the label, it's knowing that how you might tweak the volume to maintain pressure at the nozzle. There's no point slowing down if it's going to collapse 
um, the air inclusion or make the dropper size too big for the situation. So I think it's having a plan for what you're going to do and think it through before you actually go out there. And, and as uh, Andrew said at the start, you know, it's mostly about hardware in terms of drift management, but also efficacy is about the nozzle you select and then you've got a little bit of wiggle room about what you might put in the tank or how you 